here is another video uh, that we will actually go into quick programming completely. Now a quick overview for the Deimos A600 Ultra. Uh, just a quick look at the cover. Uh, we've actually moved the screws to the front for ease of access to be able to remove. Uh, to remove the cover, you just gotta give it a quick little pop on the sides and you'll be able to take the top off. Uh, once you remove the top, you'll notice a little protective cover for our control board. That comes off actually pretty easy by just pushing the two tabs on the side. It'll lift and you'll be able to slide it over to the corner. Uh, just a quick overview of the board. This is where your main power is coming from the transformer, your 24 volts. And this is of course where you would hook up your battery backup. Uh, this is your power going from the L and N going into your transformer coming out. Uh, and right here you have your LCD screen. And right above here, this guy right here, this is where you would connect your master slave uh, Biba cards or your Wi-Fi TCP link U-Link uh, card. So right here is where your connection would be, of course, with the connection on this side, board going that way. Uh, and another uh, quick thing is here are the buttons. You have three buttons. You have your OK button, your minus button, and your plus button. This is how you will maneuver in and out of your menu. Uh, now, the first thing you want to do before you get anything going, and of course, you have your photo beam set up, and of course, this is just a demo, but you have your photo beam set up, and you have your limit switches set up, and in the closed position, you're able to begin now the quick setup. You would just push the OK button once, and it will ask you the language. You would want, if it's not already on English, you'd want to scroll and find English, select OK, and then, of course, it's going to ask you the direction. It'll be right hand or left hand. Um, once you select your right hand or left hand, well, I'm going to leave it alone because it's already in the correct spot. You push OK. Then it's going to take you directly to the presets. What the presets are is actually a predetermined menu selections um, for how you want this operator to, uh, to run. So this is the automatic residential selection. Um, the next one would be your semi-automatic residential uh, selection. This one is more your automatic commercial. It'll maybe change a couple things like fast closing after somebody goes over the, the photo beam to, so you don't keep it open for so long. And then you have your semi-automatic closing. And last but not least, you have the IND function. The IND function, what that is, is pretty much like a dead man switch, meaning you have to constantly hold the button for the operator to move. Uh, for our demo purposes here, we will select AR, push OK. It'll say program for a few seconds. And after you see that, it'll actually go to auto set. When you see auto set, you would just push OK. Make sure nobody's walking in and out of the, uh, the gateway. Nobody gets in the way of the photo beams. And then you would push OK. You should get a countdown of three, two, one. And the gate will start moving. Now, I've seen this happen up to three to four times. So just let it run back and forth, full open and close. So it actually gets its slow down distances and its basic torque setup. Once it finishes, if everything went OK, you should get an OK. All right. Once you get an OK, you're able to push the OK button and it'll take you directly into remote programming. And how remote programming works is it's very simple. You know, whether you have the four button or the two button remotes, you would just have to push the two top buttons at exactly the same time until you see the light come on. The screen will say release. You let go and quickly tap the button you want to use and you'll get an OK and a number. OK1, OK2, OK13, um, and you could actually go up to about 63. Um, and it will stay here all day until you are done, so you don't have to worry about it going out of the way. Uh, once you finish with all your T-boxes or your QB touch or your middles, you would just push the OK button. It'll say end, and SLC actually is just telling you that it's closed. And of course, once it's open, you would just get an SLO. Another quick thing that I wanted to bring up is if you notice while it's closing, it shows you some numbers here. The number to the left, that is the torque it's actually using. And the numbers to the right is where you have it set, your threshold of what the torque is going to be. All right. So just a quick little info right there for you, a little tidbit. So, and of course, you're able to use your plus and minus buttons to move back and forth. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, so that more or less is the basic overview for you to at least get your gate up and running and get it started. Um, I will take you in a little bit deeper. Uh, let me just get to the next slide here.
Now a quick overview for the Deimos A600 Ultra. All right. All right. And this is what the control board looks like, uh, more in the schematic of your manual. Uh, you'll notice right here is where your main power would go connected, your L and N. Um, and of course, I know you see 220, 230, but of course we have the 120 versions available as well. Um, right over here, your 10 and 11, this is your motor connection. Uh, your 20s are all your auxes, whether it's a flashing light hookup or you want to hook up a mag lock through here. You know, your auxes are basically programmable to make it work however it is you would like to work. Uh, right over here would be your power. 50 and 51 would be your constant power for a second set of photo beams or exit probe, things like that. 50 and 52 are obviously your V-save power, and that's specifically used uh, for your testing photo beam. Uh, your 60s block right here, 60, 61, or 60 and 62, those are also programmable inputs where you could make it either open, uh, start, or close command, uh, or bar, or excuse me, a pedestrian command. Uh, they're basically programmable to make that input do whatever it is you would like to do. Um, and then lastly, you have your 70s plugs, which is all your safeties. And of course, your 70, 72, and 73 will already be taken uh, specifically because you have to use the, the, the tested photo beam. Uh, here are some fuses. Always make sure to check these bad boys out if something's not working correctly. And let's go to the next guy here. Um, now, here is a little bit more programming, a little bit more in-depth. So after I got it up and running and you had me on the phone or I was sitting right next to you, this is a little bit uh, something I like to do a little bit further to make sure your installation is set up properly. All right, now once you've actually hooked up your photo beams correctly, you have uh, have your limit switches installed properly, you've done your quick setup, and you've programmed your remotes, uh, now I like to fine-tune it a little bit, and I'll go over what we're going to do now. Uh, there's actually a function on this operator called the ice function and what that does is it basically learns the torque every time it operates so let's say the weather gets bad one day or the gate just simply gets older it'll actually learn the torque and adjust the torque properly so it's still within the ul certification settings but at the same time giving you more oomph if needed uh, so the way you would actually complete that is is like i said is first you do your quick setup and everything uh, we're going to the menu uh, the way i showed you earlier which is okay twice quickly it says halt, okay twice quickly again. It'll take you to the main menu, which starts off at parameter. Uh, you push minus, it'll take you to logic, which is what we're looking for. Push okay to enter into logic. And then you push minus, I believe eight times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bam, there it is. So it'll take you to ice, uh, ice. Uh, you select ice. Of course, it's in the off position. You push plus to turn it on. You push okay. It'll say program for a few seconds and it'll go back to ice. Uh, one more thing I'd like for you guys to do right before we exit out to run an auto set uh, is go down to safe one. Uh, safe one, what that is, is basically your controls for your safe one input. Now, the new UL that we have is making it mandatory to have the photo beam, so you have to have it on. Now, it comes default for it to work in both directions. We want it to work only while closing, which is what normally what people want. You would push OK, and you'll notice it'll either be set to a one or a different function. You would want to push plus to get to the number five and of course push OK. Once you push OK, it'll select the option, say program, and it'll go back inside. Uh, for demo purposes, I'm not changing it, but just letting you know what you're looking for. Push five, push OK, it'll go back to safe one, and then you push plus and minus only one time, because remember, we actually have to finish activating ice. So you push plus and minus once, you're in logic. Very important to run the auto set in this part of the menu and not the quick setup because the quick setup will actually turn off ice and because it's a preset remember it's like a preset uh set menu settings when you select the quick setup so we're here in the main menu you go down to auto set once you see auto set you push okay it'll count down and it'll actually run you through another open and close and this is actually setting your ice setting once it finishes and gets you an okay it's almost over should give you an okay and then there you go you got your okay you push okay once and if it's not okay push plus and minus together once and remember plus and minus is like your back button or exit button so you just keep pushing plus and minus together and it'll exit out of course you see suc which means it's in the closed position or suo for when it's in the open position 
And that is my little bit more fine tuning that I would do if I was actually right next to you in the field or if you got a hold of me on the phone. All right, and that is, I definitely recommend the ice function uh, specifically because, you know, you, you don't want to just crank the torque up all the way. That's not safe, you know what I mean? Whether it's hitting somebody's car, a little kid or something, you want it to still be able to stop uh, and give you some sort of error 30 something saying there's an obstruction there. Uh, so ice is a really good function, especially for some places where it gets cold or necessarily just bad weather or an aging gate. All right. And one of the last little uh, options or accessories that you can get with your hey, demos. Papa, sorry to cut you off there. I think we missed the uh, the battery backup. Oh, I apologize. There. My apologies. Support. I thought I was going to do that video. So Back to the torque settings. What do you recommend yeah. uh, for those in the field to set it at? Um, if you're not using the ice function, excuse me, if you're not using the ice function or you're not, you know, using the D-Track system when it does the auto set, I recommend watching the gate run. And if you notice, it tells you an actual reading of what your torque is. Um, you would actually just set it to 20 over whatever your maximum number is. But I myself prefer to use the ice function. It's more safer uh, and it, it, for the most part, it just, you know, lets it run right and still give you a safe threshold. Okay, um, excellent. And here's one of two accessories that I recommend that you would use. Uh, of course, one being the battery backup. And here's just a quick video of how to hook it up. And I skipped it. And now just a quick overview of how to hook up the battery backup. This is a pretty cool option to have and I definitely recommend it uh, for any type of power outages or anything like that. You should be able, I believe, to get about, you know, depending on heavy your gate is, you should be able to get about 40 operations out of the battery backup if you lose power. Um, so just a quick little overview here. You'll notice you have a little slot right here uh, and that's actually where it's going to slide in to go where the sensor is. Um, and very important, you see this 20, vo uh, 20 amp blade fuse, this needs to be removed and put in place with the battery backup. So that's, this will not work if you do not move that fuse over. Uh, so it actually slides in there pretty easy and it sits in there under the cover. Uh, you would actually unplug that 24 volt uh, accessory power that I showed you earlier, not accessory power, the 24 volt power for the operator. Uh, it actually unplugs from the operator, plugs in directly Sorry, excuse me. Plugs in directly to the to the the battery backup, and the battery backup comes with a twin wire to be able to hook right back up into your operator, and you have officially hooked up the battery backup. All right, guys, that's just you know simple and easy. Try to make your life a little easier uh, in and out of a job site, and be able to get up and get moving to the next one. Uh, and of course.